Buying a new computer can be tough. So whether you're shopping for back to school, Black Friday, Christmas, or just looking to buy a gift for a family member, if you don't know what you don't know, you could end up spending a lot more money than you originally planned to. That's what I want to talk to you about today. I'm going to explain everything you need to know about buying a computer. I'm going to share with you the absolute most basic information that you need in order to make an educated decision when shopping for a new computer. And I'm going to explain it in a language that the average person can understand. So here we go. The last time you went shopping for a computer, did any of this sound familiar to you? Well, the guy at the store said this one is great. Oh, oh, the guy. Oh, pardon me. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't realize you'd spoken to the guy. Yeah, you, tell me, did the guy choose one with a 4K display and a Thunderbolt port? Yes. Yeah? Well, did, did the guy make sure that this has a one terabyte solid state drive? Yes. Yo, yeah, oh, well, was this guy Rick from Computer Solutions on Colorado? You understood that clip without even thinking about it? This video may not be for you. But when salespeople start talking to you, this is the reaction you have. What? I got you covered. So you're ready to buy a computer. You already have a maximum budget in mind. So you've decided you want a laptop for mobility or a desktop for upgradability. Now, regardless of which one you choose, there are four primary factors that you need to consider when purchasing any computer. And I'm gonna cover each of them very quickly for you. I'm gonna try to make this not boring and not too technical for you. So the first factor of the four you need to consider is your hard drive. This is a hard drive. And so is this. And so is this. So between these three, what's the difference? So let me explain. Simply put, a hard drive is basically a place for your computer to store files. Whether it's pictures, videos, documents, spreadsheets, if you can view it, watch it, or listen to it, you store it on a physical hard drive. This is also where your computer's operating system, like Microsoft Windows or Mac OS, get installed to, as well as any programs that you download from the internet. They're all installed on the hard drive. All this device does is store files. Now this is what's known as a standard hard drive. It's also commonly called a spindled hard drive. These drives have been around since the late 1970s, and this has pretty much been the standard for nearly 50 years. Now, the amount of storage capacity on these drives has become enormous over the last few years, and the prices have plummeted. These are the kind of drives that are going to be in the most lower-end, consumer-grade machines that you may get at Walmart or Office Max or stores like that. Typical spindled hard drives. The next type of drive you might see when shopping for a computer, you may see the term SSD, which is this guy right here. Now, SSD stands for solid state device. What that means is that there are no moving parts inside this device. All your data is stored on chips instead of the spindle disks inside a traditional hard drive. Now, because this drive has no moving parts, it's much, much faster than a traditional hard drive. The downside is, is because it's newer technology, it's going to be much faster, but it's also gonna be more expensive than the traditional guy. So when comparing drives, you need to decide whether you want the extra storage space or do you want the speed. For the same number of dollars spent, you're going to get much less storage space on this than you would on this, but this is much faster than this. The next drive that you're likely to see is what's called an M.2 drive. It's this little guy right here. This operates the same as this. All digital, no moving parts. Also, less storage space and more expensive than this guy. So you have the traditional hard drive, which has a lot more storage, but it's slower, it's mechanical. Then you have the SSD drive, which has no moving parts, but less storage. Then you have the M.2 drive, which is also digital, no moving parts, faster than this one, way faster than this one, but more expensive and less room. What is most important to you? Do you want speed or performance or do you want the ability to store more files? Now, as far as knowing what size hard drive to get, a lot of that depends on what you're going to store on your hard drive. So for example, if you have mostly documents like eBooks and Word documents and recipes and Christmas card lists and basically a bunch of text documents, you can see they take up only one to five megabytes on average, which is very, very small. Next on the list is MP3s, which are music files, and those take up about three and a half megabytes a piece. CD-ROMs are about 750 megabytes. A DVD is 4 gigabytes. A 1080p HD movie is 8 to 15 gigabytes and so on and so on. So as you can see the more music, images, or videos that you're going to put on your computer the more space you're going to need. And that's a factor you need to consider as far as which size hard drive to go with when you purchase a computer. 
if your computer is mostly going to be geared for schoolwork or running a business and very little music or movies or anything like that, you can get away with a much smaller hard drive, even as small as a 512 gigabyte hard drive. That will last you forever. If you download a lot of music and movies or have tens of thousands of photos that you want to put on your computer, you're going to want to go on the larger end into the terabyte range, starting at around one terabyte. If you do any kind of project work where you're working with media, you're going to want that extra storage space. For the vast majority of people who really only use their computer just to get online and do banking and social media and things like that, you really don't need a ton of space. So save your money and go with the smaller hard drive. So when it comes to choosing a hard drive, there's always going to be a trade-off. File storage versus speed. You have to decide what makes the most sense for your needs. So don't let the salesperson at the big box store convince you that you need a four or six terabyte hard drive when a one terabyte is more than enough. Their job is to make money selling you products. I want you to stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to show you how to figure out exactly how much storage space you need based on what you currently have. So stick around. Now the second factor you need to consider out of the four is what's called memory, also known as RAM. That's this guy right here. Your computer does not store files on this like it does on the hard drive. All memory does is it allows your computer to communicate with this guy. All modern computers come with removable memory sticks and they range in size, but the most important thing that you need to know is generally the more memory you have, the faster your computer is going to run, with one small exception, which I'll get to in just a second. Generally, the more memory you have, the faster your programs, your documents, anything that you've stored on the computer, your web browser, generally those things are gonna open a lot faster when you have more memory, so once again, don't let a salesperson convince you that you need a computer with 32 gigabytes of memory when four or eight gigabytes would be more than enough. Four to eight gigabytes is pretty good for your average home computer. Now the third factor of the four is your CPU or processor. Think of the CPU as the brains of the computer. When you click your mouse or do something on your computer, you are telling it, go do this, whether it's open a document, open a web page, Whatever it is, play this song. Your CPU says, I've been told to do something, now go do it. It communicates with the memory, communicates with the hard drive, and then goes and performs that task. The CPU is arguably the most important part of the computer. Now, the CPU is the exception to my previous statement. And the reason for that is because the CPU on modern laptops is not upgradable. It's usually hardwired to the main board. You can't pop that old one out and pop a new one in like you can with memory or with hard drive. Although I listed the CPU as the third factor in the four, it is the one that might make the most difference as far as performance wise, because the CPU is actually the brains and the muscle of the computer. Don't get too caught up in which processor you need. There's two main companies, Intel and AMD. Intel's modern processors go from the Core i3 all the way up to the latest Core i9. AMD uses what's called a Ryzen chip and their latest is the Ryzen 9. In other words, if you don't need an i9 and you could survive on an i5, then buy the i5. That's gonna save you several hundred dollars right off the bat. I would choose an Intel i7 with less memory over an Intel i5 with more memory simply because I can add memory later. I can't upgrade the processor. I hope that makes sense for you. So go with the better CPU if your budget allows for it. So if you are using your computer mainly just to get online and do online banking, email, social media, things like that, an i3 or i5 processor would be more than enough for those basic needs. Same with the AMD version, whereas a Ryzen 3 or even a Ryzen 5 would be plenty for those basic needs. You only need to go upwards in processor strength when it comes to doing things that are gonna require the machine to do more work. So the heart of the machine has to work to do what you want it to do, like editing videos or music creation or creating YouTube videos or anything like that. You're gonna want that extra horsepower, but for the vast majority of people who really only do five or six basic things that don't even require a lot of horsepower, you can save a ton of money going on the lower end of those processors. So for the average consumer, all you really need to know about processors is the lower the processor, the less the horsepower. You can get an i3 for basic functionality. If you're a student or you sit at home and you just get online, maybe do social media, you don't need a ton of horsepower. So an i3 or i5 would be more than plenty. 
And the same on the AMD side, the lower end Ryzen's are gonna be just fine for your basic purposes. You just have to figure out what works best for your budget and how much horsepower your computer is going to need for the things that you do every day. The final factor that you need to consider, and I firmly believe this and have for a long time, your computer warranty is what is going to make or break it when it comes to your happiness. Many people just buy a computer and they stick with the factory one year warranty and on the 53rd week of ownership, the computer dies. So I've got a little insider secret for you. Come here. Your computer's gonna die. All computers die at some point. Can't get around it, can't avoid it. But what you can do is save yourself a lot of time and headache and avoid having to go replace a computer way too soon. I have stacks and stacks and stacks of dead desktops and laptops to prove my point. Many of them died just outside of that factory warranty. Spend that money and buy the extended warranty. So my money is always on the machine that fits my budget that has the best warranty. I have an old adage that I use with my customers because I get that question all the time is which brand do I buy? And I always say, stop thinking about brands. You're buying a warranty and you get a computer with it. Think of it that way. The machine with the best warranty that fits your budget and has most of those bells and whistles is gonna be the machine that you want. I'm gonna give you an example. I own a Dell Studio XPS desktop. On the outside, it's clearly a Dell. But inside, there's not a single thing that makes that a Dell computer. The only thing that makes it Dell is that plastic around the outside. The processors are made by Intel. Hard drives, Western Digital and Samsung. The sound cards made by NVIDIA. The Wi-Fi adapter is made by TP-Link. The motherboard and its components are all Intel. There's not one single component inside that computer that is Dell. So why would I focus on getting a Dell computer when I'm shopping around? So don't let brands trick you into thinking that one is better than the other they're not. So here's your to-do list. Number one, set your budget, even if it's just setting the maximum amount that you want to spend. So number two, decide what type of hard drive you want. Do you need a lot of storage space? Do you download a lot of music and movies? Movies, pictures, and videos take up the most space. If you have documents, spreadsheets, PDF files, things like that, they take up hardly any space at all. Even if you have hundreds of thousands of documents, they take up very little space. It's the videos, songs and the pictures that eat up the most storage space. Third, figure out how much memory you need. And again, most modern computers you're gonna see now are four to six gigabytes. That's pretty much the standard. For most home users, that's gonna be more than enough for you. The more stuff you do, the more memory you should consider. And remember, you can always upgrade later. So once you've done all of the above, now you're starting to whittle the list down to a handful of computers. Out of those computers, pick the one with the fastest processor and put that towards the top of your list. Now that you have your top three to five choices in mind, Start at the top and look at the extended warranty costs and work your way down. If your first choice on the list is an amazing machine with all the bells and whistles, but the warranty is a hundred extra dollars a year, and the second machine on the list maybe doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but the warranty is only 25 extra dollars a year, I would take the second machine on the list all day long because what's going to happen is, is if you love that machine and a year and a week into your ownership and it dies, you paid that a little bit of extra money on the front end. Instead of getting all the bells and whistles, you cut back a little bit and you spent that money on the warranty. When the machine does break, it's gonna pay for itself and now you'll be able to get many more years of use out of it for not much more money. Long story short, buy the most amount of warranty that your budget will allow and get the bells and whistles to fill the gaps. So I hope this information was helpful for you to kind of get a better idea of what all that stuff is inside the computer when you're out shopping for a new one. If you're looking to upgrade your computer, but you need to know exactly how much storage space you need, you need to click on this video right here because I walk you through step-by-step -step on how to figure out how much space you're taking up on your current computer so that you'll know how big of a drive to go with on the next one.